What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 18th financial charting tutorial within Python and Matplotlib. Where we left off, um, oops, uh, we were charting this chart here. Uh, we did the, uh, you know, the candlestick, the moving averages. We just overlaid the volume here and we've made some space for RSI, but we don't have any like logic for the RSI. Um, the other thing I think we should probably do is move the legend maybe up here just so it's like not in the way. So I think that'll be the next thing that we do real quick is just move that legend and then let's get started with the RSI. So for the legend, um, a couple things we want to do. First of all, let me just change that to, this is now stock price and volume on this axis. And then also the legend, uh, oh, never mind, we already have a legend here. Uh, location nine is upper middle. Uh, the other thing I wouldn't mind doing is you can say end call for number of columns. So we can make this two columns. Um, and I think that'll be it. So we'll save that. Let's run that and just look at where we are now. Nice. Okay, a little better. Hard to see this, but eventually we'll add a uh, faded out background so that's easier to see. But I don't want to get too busy with that right now because we're trying to do this RSI. So let's do the RSI. Close that. So let's go all the way to the top of our um, script here. And what I think we is best to do is just define an RSI function. So what we want to do is define RSI func. And in the parameters, we want to have prices. And then um, kind of like the time period, right? And in this one, we're going to use a 14. That's just kind of a common uh, one to use. Now, before we actually go and, and program uh, this in, I would just like to say um, or explain the relative strength index just in case you guys maybe need a refresher on it or you have no idea what it is. Basically, it's a probably the best one is a momentum oscillator or something like that. And it what it does is it's going to tell you, or the, at least the biggest part that it tells you, um, is whether or not a stock is like looking to be overbought or oversold and I would say it's actually pretty correct you know anytime it's over 70 that's overbought and anytime it's under 30 it's uh, likely oversold and likely overbought sorry it's not always going to be the case obviously but it's it's usually pretty darn accurate actually and uh, but when we're done here you'll be able to see um, see it in action but it's you know with a lot of companies um, it only hits the like you know above 70 or below 30 you know a handful of times at most in like a year you know so unless it's a really really volatile stock but anyway um, so the calculation of this is going to be 100 minus you know open parentheses I suppose you could say 100 over 1 plus relative strength now you might be like well what's relative strength Relative strength is the average gain over the average loss based on what a number of periods, right? And most people are going to use 14. It's just kind of um, the way it is, like by default. But you could choose, you know, a different one if you wanted. But we're going to use 14. Um, but obviously, what you could, you know, this we've defined the default value, but you could, you could assign a different one in the function if you chose. So anyway, um, so yeah, that's the calculation of it. So what we're going to do is kind of run through how we would calculate that in um, Python. So let's get started. So, um, and also, by the way, this is um, pretty similar to the one that they're using in, um, I think, the Matplotlib Binance. This, this was somewhere in there. And so a lot of this that uh, that I have here is going to look a lot like theirs. So you can also look at theirs if you're a little confused about what's going on. So we're going to say deltas, you know, change, equals the NP diff of prices. So what's the difference of the prices? Then we're going to use seed equals deltas. And in here... We will do colon, everything to n plus 1. Now, up will be anything that is minus seed, oops, seed, bracket, see anything 
less than zero and then sum divided by oops sum divided by um, the time frame then down is going to be um, I'm sorry I think I've let's see yeah yeah I'm sorry guys I, I flipped these around so <laughs> this will be the down function with minus c to anything less that was let's see there and the up function is or variable will be seed and then anything obviously greater than or equal to zero so any seed greater than or equal um, to zero and then again dot sum divided by the time divided by time period let me re let's look over this one more time before I get uh, get too deep into this equation here. Yeah, okay. I think I think we've got we've done that right. We'll we'll know pretty quickly. <laughs> and now what we're going to want to say is the relative strength equals up divided by down, and then the relative strength index equals um, numpy zeros like and then uh, prices and then uh, RSI up to that time period equals 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus RS and actually this needs to be in parentheses so it does it correctly in order and good so now come down again and what we're going to want to say is 4i in range of n land prices colon delta equals deltas and this would be i minus one um, let's see now if delta is greater than zero, up val equals delta, down val equals zero point. And so we get decimals basically. Uh, else, oh dear, what has gone on here? This, let's fix the spacing. I'm not sure why I did that to us, but. else colon up val equals zero point and then down val equals negative delta scroll down oh, finally up equals up times n minus one plus uh, up val divided by n down equals down uh, oops, down equals down times n minus one plus down val divided by n Quick glance, make sure you typed everything right. Down, down, and, and then RS equals up divided by down, and then RSI I equals 100 point minus 100 point divided by um, 1 point plus RS. Cool. Now, return RSI. Whew, gosh, I hate doing math and programming because you just know, like, like an itty bitty thing. Like, you know, the RSI, um, you know, calculation for RSI is extremely minimal. And then you, like, turn it into a calculation on, like, a program, and it's like, oh my goodness. 
so I think we're good. Like I said, we'll know pretty quickly when we uh, get the uh, returned value. Uh, and either it works or it doesn't. You should be able to visually tell. So I think what we're going to do, let's just clean this up a little bit. Save this. And I think that probably took up a lot of time just writing out this function. So I'm going to pause the video here and we'll continue on in the um, next video. So uh, stay tuned in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions. And until next time.